Welcome, I'm Bishop Peter Jugis of the Diocese of Charlotte. This year, 2022, we are excited to be celebrating the 50th anniversary of the founding of our diocese. For us, it is a fitting time as a diocesan family to reflect on our past, embrace our present, and look forward to our future. We give thanks to God for the precious gift of our Catholic faith from our roots in the Carolina Gold Rush, to the formation of the diocese in 1972, to the vibrant family of faith we are today. Over half a million Catholics now call Western North Carolina home. But there was a time when Catholics were isolated and treated with hostility here. A handful of priests rode the circuit back then to reach the few Catholics scattered across hundreds of miles of wilderness, saying Mass and administering the sacraments in private homes. After the American Revolution, a new era, William Gaston, a North Carolina Catholic who served as judge, legislator, and congressman, helped remove official discrimination against Catholics from the state constitution in 1835. At the same time, more Catholics began putting down roots in the Carolinas, mostly Irish stonemasons and tradesmen who found work with the railroads, construction, and gold mines. In 1843, Irish miners who had come to search for gold along the Catawba River built St. Joseph Church near Mount Holly, the first Catholic church west of Raleigh. Now a national historic site, this humble wooden church stands witness to the perseverance and faith of these pioneering Catholic families. Father Jeremiah O'Connell was among a handful of trailblazing priests who ministered to the few hundred Catholic families living here. Traveling tirelessly across a diocese that covered both the Carolinas and Georgia. In 1851, O'Connell traveled three days by stagecoach from the diocese's home city of Charleston to lay the cornerstone of St. Peter's in Uptown Charlotte. During his travels, O'Connell realized the need for a Catholic college and seminary to educate people and nurture vocations to the priesthood. He bought 500 acres of farmland near what now is the town of Belmont. Bishop James Gibbons, the leader of the church in North Carolina at the time, agreed that a Catholic college was needed. So he invited a community of Benedictine monks to establish a college on the land, what today is Belmont Abbey Monastery and College. In 1876, the first Benedictines arrived. Father Leo Hayde was elected as the first abbot of the growing community and soon also became responsible for the church in North Carolina. Like the circuit-riding priests before them, the Benedictine monks had a pioneering spirit and unwavering missionary zeal. Together with the Sisters of Mercy, who arrived here in the 1880s, they established parishes, schools, and hospitals across Western North Carolina. From the 1880s to the 1920s, North Carolina's Catholic population tripled to more than 8,000 people, served by 52 priests. This growth prompted Pope Pius XI to make North Carolina a diocese in its own right in 1924. The new Diocese of Raleigh encompassed the entire state, except for a limited territory governed by Belmont Abbey. Its first bishop, William Joseph Haffey from Baltimore, at 37, then the youngest bishop in the U.S. Through the early to mid-20th century, the number of white and black Catholic families continued to grow. Home masses, the norm in those early years, continued even as more churches and schools were built. One of those new churches was St. Patrick in Charlotte. Built by local Irish families in 1939, it would later become the cathedral for the Diocese of Charlotte. By 1971, 
Raleigh's visionary Bishop Vincent Waters realized the church in North Carolina had grown too large for him to shepherd alone. With over 60,000 Catholics spread across nearly 50,000 square miles, it was time to split North Carolina into two dioceses, putting each on a human scale, as called for by the Second Vatican Council. Pope Paul VI agreed, issuing a document called a Papal Bull in November of 1971, ordering the establishment of a new diocese. Just six weeks later, on January 12, 1972, the Diocese of Charlotte was officially founded. Monsignor Michael Bagley, a Greensboro priest, was ordained and installed as the first bishop during a special mass at the newly elevated St. Patrick Cathedral. The next morning, we were open for business, Bagley later recalled. Bagley's appointment was a sign of God's providence. The son of an Irish immigrant himself, he was also distantly related to Bishop Haffey, the first bishop of North Carolina. Bagley led the new diocese through its formative years with wisdom and pragmatism, establishing the foundational ministries and structures for the diocese and its 75 parishes and missions. His work on behalf of the Appalachian poor gained national attention for the plight of those in remote reaches of the diocese. Since Bishop Bagley, the Diocese of Charlotte has had three bishops. John Donahue, who had the vision to buy land for future growth and to lead a synod in 1987 that would guide the diocese for years to come. William Curlin, who called attention to North Carolina's economic disparities, founded the diocese's affordable housing initiative and showed a special love for ministry to the elderly, sick, and dying. And the current and longest serving bishop, Peter Jugas, who has led the diocese through significant multicultural growth and modern complexities. Baptized and mentored by Begley, Jugas is the first native son to serve as bishop of the Charlotte Diocese, fulfilling the hopes of those pioneering missionaries long ago who prayed for local vocations to build up the church in North Carolina. And what a growing, vibrant, and diverse family the diocese is today. Just as the church reached out to Irish immigrants in earlier times, the diocese now embraces many new immigrant groups. Catholics from Mexico, Central and South America, Southeast Asia, Eastern Europe, Lebanon, India, and Africa. In total, more than 500,000 people spread across 46 counties in 92 parishes and missions. The diocese operates 19 schools and more than 50 ministries and programs, including food banks, counseling, affordable housing, prison ministry, youth and elder ministry, campus ministry, anti-poverty efforts, refugee resettlement, teen pregnancy support, pro-life advocacy, and new in 2022, a family life office to deepen support for families who have made the diocese what it is today. The number of priests has grown too, nearly double the number in 1972. And the diocese is forming a new generation of priests right here at home. In 2020, the diocese opened St. Joseph College Seminary, a permanent home for its flourishing vocations program where young men from the diocese can pray and learn more about becoming a priest while also attending Belmont Abbey College. Located in Mount Holly, the seminary is not far from where those early pioneers built Old St. Joseph Church and Belmont Abbey, where Catholicism first took root in Western North Carolina. Ever diverse and growing, the Diocese of Charlotte remains grounded in faith, and nowhere is this more on display 
than at the annual Eucharistic Congress. Each fall, thousands of Catholics from across Western North Carolina gather for this diocesan family reunion. Started by Bishop Jugas in 2005, the event includes a stirring procession and multicultural fellowship, and above all, demonstrates love for the Eucharist, the source and summit of the Catholic faith. We stand on the shoulders of these countless missionary priests, consecrated religious, and faithful laymen and women who built up the church in Western North Carolina. Thanks to their sacrifices, hard work, and devotion, our diocese was born and has flourished over these past 50 years. As we commemorate this golden anniversary year, I invite you to seek a closer relationship with the Lord and with one another, ever grateful to God for our faith, which is truly more precious than gold. May God bless you and keep you.